Platinum selling artist Neo has praised South Korea for producing the best boy bands in the entire world, but his compliments turn into a fiery discussion about the appropriation of black culture and how come black people don't get enough credit for influencing K-pop so much. Guys, this is a spicy one. From silly to serious, Andrew, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the silly category, but sometimes the discussions, they wade into serious territories. Let's run the clip. What happened to the boy band? I mean, because, you know, will there ever be another uh, new kids and, and boys to men and in sync and let let us keep in mind that the boy band is not dead. It's not. It's not dead. It's just Korean. Oh, okay, okay, yes. okay. Shout out to BTS. Shout out to the whole K-pop movement. Like right. they still they still going they strong with the right. boy band movement. It's just it's I don't know. I you know what I got to give a lot of credit to to K-pop and just I've I've been over there and saw just the machine that it is over there. Like they're literally going from like from a kid, from a child and training these kids in, in music, guitar, piano, real live music, teaching them how to really sing, really dance, and then deciding if they're gonna get in a group or if you're gonna be a solo artist. And it's like, and it's producing, it's producing a pretty quality product if right. I do say so myself. So shout out to K-pop and just everything that's happening in that movement, man, it's dope. Long story short, man, Andrew, let me tell you this real quick. This is kind of an aside. I do not think Shannon Sharp knows what the hell Neo is talking about? Now, skip, skip. Yo, he's from the skip, old school. He's from a time where they don't understand that there's global music markets, and you know what I mean. Like, skip. I am very familiar with BTS, <laughs> the behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah but, but Neo's but, like, nah, nah, nah. Skip. Pop music still does exist. Yeah. Voice to Men still does exist. But it's Korean. Yeah, I guess so. This discussion, obviously, this is not a new discussion about how much credit like black culture or black people or at least black musicians should get for the influences of K-pop. But it seems like it's getting re-sparked again. Why? Because what K-pop has now reached this ultimate max level where it's being exported back to the West, right? Well, any, yeah, anytime something reaches like a huge critical mass. There's like discussions that were there, but they weren't really top of mind. Mm. Now, Neo actually in the interview with Shannon does not talk about that. No. I'm not saying he may or may not have thoughts about it. And it sounded like he kind of wanted to go into the pros and cons of almost the, the hardcore militarization of the K-pop industry mm. from youth developing mm -hmm. youth idols. But he definitely kept a PC and was like, at the end of the day, they're killing it, man. Shout out to them. Like, he, he didn't want to get into the pros and the cons of it all. Yeah, definitely. So we're going to go in the comment section. A lot of different people uh, have different perspectives. Please hit that like button. Check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys. I mean, uh, I, I guess a couple questions I would have for people, you know, watching this video is like, how do... Well, how would K-pop artists show more respect and give more credit to like black artists, right? right. Like that's a question. How do, how is it done? I think a lot of people can agree that maybe they could shout them out more. I, I would agree, but I guess like what does it look like? Yeah, I don't know. Is it more collaborations? Obviously, you're starting to see it now with uh, Jungkook and Lotto yeah. and uh, uh, J-Hope and J-Cole. Right, right. But also, another question is where does the appropriation or the borrowing of culture, whichever word you want to use, start? You know, where does it, like, it's how far very, do you go very, back? very, very difficult and murky, but, you know, the comments section went into it. You know, guys, uh, we're just here to break it down and give our analysis. We're going to get to the comments section, our own takeaways. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, Andrew. We are not subject matter experts on K-pop. Mm. But it doesn't mean that we can't lend our brains to analyzing it. Somebody said, Neo is talking about the hyper-commodification of the person into a product to be consumed by the masses. How K-pop companies refined the formula and made it even more profitable and exploitative. It's worthy of praise from a business, entertainment, industrial complex perspective, but we should note that there is real human wreckage that comes out of this system. Mm. That was and, a deep comment. No, he and, said a lot. Well, this guy is good at writing. Bro, you could tell when Neo was saying, yo, they got this machine, and the machine is like, uh... And then he didn't want to go, because anytime someone says the machine, it's usually not a positive thing, but it is, like, positive and negative. Guys, we know the K-pop system has pros and cons, all right? Let's be honest. Of course, Andrew, some people defended Korean entertainment, saying, I feel like if you look at the Jackson 5 story, New Edition, all the way to NSYNC and Backstreet Boys, there's exploitations in each of the stories. I do not think K-pop is any different. It's just my personal opinion. It was already a formula. It was already exploitation on a pop level. Now it's just Korean, just my opinion. And that goes for everybody dissing the K-pop development system. Yo, do you think the Koreans were like, hey, you know, like Americans, they don't want to like do the boy band thing anymore, but... We're going to do it. We're going to do it. We can take it on. We are like going to mix it with boarding school and the military and <laughs> Olympic system from like Russia or China and then all put it together. Um, I don't know. You guys know a lot more about this. I know there's so many documentaries. I think, Andrew, do you think with the recent, I don't know, maybe whatever, uh, suicides or whatever, that people is more 
questioning. We got this dope system that's producing amazing yeah. musical products. Yeah. Everybody loves our entertainers yeah. that emerge yeah. from this system. But at what cost? No, no, no. I don't think that they're going to stop with the machine. I think they are going to tweak how the machine works and also like the mental health kind of support that they give a lot of these young uh, K-pop trainees, of course. And I think they should because there needs to be a little bit more support for them. But I don't think they're going to stop the machine, bro. You this can't. machine is cranking out amazing products. Let's be real. Somebody said it's just the same way parents train their kids to become a pro sports superstar from a very young age. You're probably not going to make it pro now days if you're not training at the five six years old how yeah. is it any different yeah yeah i think it's interesting especially you know in america we don't have this kind of machine uh exploitative thing as much i guess you would no, say quote but, unquote yeah, exploitative. but in, no for music but we but we have it for sports well, kind of for sports but even in europe they have people go pro at like the age 14 and 15 yeah. so it's even younger out there where you can be playing pro and getting paid as a full-time employee the, the u.s system is very interesting because we still produce some of the best entertainers and athletes but you're right it's actually less systemized than almost everywhere else yeah. in the world yeah everywhere else is trying to like optimize to produce the best product somebody says this r&b ish game in korea is crazy af it will crush your soul all them MFers insane. Mm. Yeah, I mean, oh, this is just, okay. yeah, I want to comment. Somebody said, 90s K-pop boy bands were ahead of their time incorporating hip-hop into their music. There's not enough recognition for that. Yeah, I mean, I would say, I think for any group that is uh, doing hip-hop, I mean, especially back then, I think, I think you could tell that they were praising them, but there wasn't at, at least, like, specific shout-outs, I guess, in their songs and interviews. Right. And I guess... Because it's so much done, like, overseas in a whole different world, I can see and, why they didn't get the proper shout-out, but but and, they probably should. And especially back then with the Seo Taiji or even to H.O.T., mm -hmm. those are things that more existed within the Korean world only. Right. They hadn't reached the rings right, right, right. out of the orbit, you know, to the outside of their world. Somebody said yes, and by the way, this person's Korean. Shout out to the black American community for sharing and creating their music and styles because that's where a lot of K-pop stems from or gets the inspiration from originally. And somebody said, inspired by, by the way, I call it stealing. I, 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 I don't know about the stealing word, man. I think it's tough. Stealing is like when I take something from you and you don't have it anymore. Right? Right. I, that is technically, I'm just saying that's the technical term of stealing. And somebody else wrote like, this really huge comment with like, I'll just pop it up right now because I don't even know what they're talking about. I'm sure there's so many documentaries about uh, how hip hop, you know, got in there and, and it was boys to men considered hip hop. And, and when mm -hmm. did, you know, all the influence come in and which artists broke it open and which which artists need to show more appreciation because their, their inspiration is more hip hop or more R&B than others. Right, right, right. I, I think it's just a... Uh, I think just like one thing, and this is maybe like a really funny, like I'm not like a like a funny solution, but I think like I think part of the reason is is because some black people feel like Asians, and maybe I'm just gonna focus on Koreans for a second, that they are like a little bit racist, right? And like you know, I'm just saying this is not that's not a crazy thing for me to say. A lot of people we talk about this all the time, right? Like there's tension between blacks and Asians and Asians on black. Like both sides are feeling like the other side doesn't like them for a number of different reasons. Right. So I'm LA saying riots or whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, whatever it could be, right? So I'm saying like I guess. That's also part of the discussion that a lot of people aren't mentioning is that there's somewhat of a, a there, tense There is an undertone that, 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 that is almost too intense to bring up in yeah, a K-pop Yeah, yeah, where I'm saying, like, I don't think really, like, anything really bad has happened since the riots and, you know, for yeah, decades. It, but it, it has to go back to L.A. and the flow of culture between uh, L.A.'s Korean scene and Korea, right. but there's also a right, lot of so tension maybe, in maybe, L.A. racially. Maybe the key is just to be nicer to each other. I don't know. I don't know if that's enough credit. But that then somebody mean. said, you know, BSB and NSYNC, they totally copied a lot of black culture too if you look at like justin timberlake or that's some true. of the other guys that's especially true especially some particular guys especially in the, justin timberlake you know, justin timberlake is a, but i'll say this justin timberlake does give a lot of credit right he does give a lot of credit to the black somebody artists. said bsb walked so bts could run and then somebody said new kids on the block crawled so bsb could walk and somebody said jackson five would like to have a work with word with you and somebody said what about the beatles did they inspire jackson five and somebody said the four tops have entered the stage and that was the original black boy band that some people say it was but wow. i'm gonna do it one better andrew i'm gonna go ahead and say the first hip-hop artists were the jubilaires aka known as Lil baby's grandfather they came on the arc in two by two Dude. and no, this is the meme that people say that this is and, little baby. Andrew, back then. the Jubilaires were four black guys, essentially to me, sounding like they were rapping in 1935. That's 
Crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, anything, like I said, if I was going to give credit to somebody, I, I think my whole thing is like, Everything absolutely is trace backing, uh, tracing back to black Americans and that whole experience, uh, American descendants of slaves and this whole oppression uh, that had a lot of pain, but a lot of beautiful things creatively emerged from it. But how do you show love to it? Yeah. How do you show credit? I don't, I don't know. Like, is it, you know, like reparations type thing, or is it just shouting them out and just showing love right, or inviting absolutely. them, maybe inviting the old heads and the OGs back to Korea and just, Showing them a good time. I don't know. At least they can post about it. Right. You know? Somebody said Neo is also part Chinese. Fun fact. And somebody said this is actually really interesting. Andrew, Neo is actually a quarter Chinese himself. That's crazy. On his dad's side. Yeah, very interesting. But, but I guess he didn't really know his dad growing up, Andrew. But I don't know. Why, why do you think? Do you think Neo is so big in the Asian community because his music kind of sounds Asian? Because Neo apparently has been to China like 10 times and has even performed at the White House where Xi Jinping was in the audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Neo's music, I don't want to say it sounds Asian, but I think it sounds like something that Asians really like. And I think it's easy to sing along with, right? It's it, it's very so like- So sick of love song. Sexy love. And it's just like, uh, Asians, I don't know. Dude, if you go to a karaoke, if you go to KTV or, or Nori Bar, I'm pretty sure Asians are singing Neo's like top 10. He kind of has an Asian tone to his voice. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyways, I, I think people also like his lyrics. He's well, a good writer. I need a I think. Uh, David, I guess this kind of goes back to like culture being shared, uh, culture being borrowed. I don't know if I would say stealing, but I think appropriation... I don't know if you want to use that word too, and and it, and appropriation even has different connotations, right? Yeah, I mean, listen, man, it's so hard to draw the lines. Like, listen, like this person who's a K-pop, let's say a Black American from LA, and they were brought over to Seoul for decades now as a choreographer, or they were brought over as a music producer, or they were brought over to do reference tracks, or they were brought over there as uh, consultants for the K-pop game. They're going to be like, oh man, I had a great time. Yeah. They brought me out for like yeah, X yeah. amount of months and gave me a big contract. What? Like, you know what I'm saying? But then other people that are just like, maybe Black Americans that are listening to the music that wasn't a part of the back end or not able to benefit from it, they might be eating this product being like, what? You took my culture, Koreanized it, and sold it back to me. Yeah. And I like it, but I don't know how I feel about it because I don't know if I feel appreciated at KCON or whatever. Right, right, right. I, I think of, like, I think about food sometimes because I know, like, you know, Asian food is very popular. But let's say, and there's just a lot of great white chefs or black chefs that cook Asian food. Right, they travel back to that land and they learn all the recipes and they come back and they open up a bunch of Thai restaurants and they get recognized the for it. I got Pock Pock with Andy yeah, Richter. Yeah, what is, what, is their, what is their obligation? Do they have to only hire Asians? No. Do, should they obviously acknowledge where it comes from? Yeah, of course. Um, should they welcome Asians into the restaurant? Yeah, but that's it. Like, they don't fully owe everything. They don't owe their, like, Profit to Asian people. Yeah, I've never been a huge fan of people roasting white chefs that were cooking Asian food. I never thought that we should gatekeep it. I thought that it was fair to criticize them too, though. Yeah. And just like in the same way, I do think it's fair to bring up, like, you know what I mean? Like, if if, if in the K-pop industry, there needs to be a bigger movement to acknowledge. I don't yeah. know if it's happening right now. Obviously, J-Hope with J. Cole. Right. And, uh, you know... There's more collaborations now with American artists as K-pop sort of breaks yeah. the U.S. market. Yeah, finally. I do think, like, Jay Park try to address it a little bit in like when he was like freestyling on Sway, I think, you know, but anyways, like, I think like basically I think everybody knows. And I guess the point is like how much recognition is enough recognition and maybe they haven't done enough or maybe they feel like they have, I don't know. I right. mean, part they, of they, they definitely, they never made the songs like Eminem, you know, yeah. how like Eminem made like so many songs yeah. about like white well, America. Or, like I, I will say this, maybe it's showing respect by doing it well. You know what I mean? Like right. taking it seriously, Dude, taking the craft uh, seriously. To be honest, and I know a lot of people are going to be like, quit playing the middle fumbles. I don't know what the answer is. It's very, very difficult to say. And it could vary. David, you like rap? You're wearing a J. Cole shirt right now. Uh, am I guilty of appropriation? Well, no. Did that shirt appropriate or say? I don't know. But I'm just <laughs> appreciating it. I'm yeah, a big fan of J. Cole. Yeah. J. Cole has a new song out with Boss. Passport, Passport Bros. It's, it's really good. It's I'm a fan song. of all the Dreamville artists. Summer song. Anyways, guys, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Again, you know, shout out to all the great K-pop artists that dedicate their lives to, to making the music. And shout out to all the artists that came before from America to everywhere that, you know, kind of have set the groundwork and kind of inspired everybody. Because there's a lot. Yeah, but I think more appreciation 
it's never wrong. Yeah, I, I, think, that's I think that that's my final takeaway. Okay. More appreciation to the black American experience because, to be honest, I do think that one thing that a lot of Asians get wrong, and I'm full, I'm saying this for real, is there's a lot of pain that went into that creation of that creativity mm. and all those amazing cultural products that came out of that too. Yeah, like it it it, it was a package deal. So we got to acknowledge that we can't just be like looking at the great cultural output and be like, oh, that's the part I want, and then you're not acknowledging that people had to go through a lot of bad stuff too. Yeah. Well, let us know in the comments down below how you think it should look, uh, how valid is this conversation, and uh, thank you for watching the Hot Pot Boys, and until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.